Jones. Then it's almost time. Oh, I can't wait. I'm just can't wait. <laughs> Dreams are perhaps the most forgettable thing we might ever stumble across. We fail to remember almost all of them, especially after we wake up. It's a pretty creepy concept. A person takes everyday objects and scenes from their mind and reconstructs a pseudo-image from their own consciousness, all while laying completely still and unable to move a single muscle. The hunter's dream seems to resemble an entirely different plane of existence your hunter can travel to. A place where you can grow stronger and attain mighty weapons capable of unspeakable destruction. In this dream, you'll meet Garman, the first hunter and advisor to the rest of them. The first hunt took place in the age of the Thumerians. Hunters such as Lawrence, Ludwig, and Garman in his prime all clashed against nightmarish creatures born from the darkness of the city people called Thumaru the precursor to the city of what is now Old Yarnum. These beings were among the most powerful, and Garman and his apprentices nearly hunted the Thumerian beasts to extinction. Realizing that the hunt would continue on in a cyclical nature, and the beasts would always return to the ground above, Garman created a sort of safe haven, a place where all hunters can come to rest, and eventually be laid to rest in the serenity of Garman's dream. You'll also encounter a living, breathing doll. She is who you come to when you want to upgrade your hunter and increase his stats. She seems to be much more enigmatic than she lets on. She bleeds pale, clear blood, the blood of the Great Ones, and can manipulate blood echoes. This may just be an illusion of the dream and nothing more, but there's something surrounding this mysterious character. Awaken above ground and you'll discover that this dreamscape was modeled after an area in Yarnum an accessible place should you decide to take the risk. You can find it down below the Healing Church Workshop building. Head below and drop down into a decrepit wooden structure. One wrong move and you could very well plummet to your death. You may die a couple times trying to get here, so be patient. There's a door you can access if you start off halfway across the first bridge. Turn around and jump to the ledge below you. There will be another ledge below you again after that. Make sure your health is topped off after each jump. If your health isn't high enough, you could die even while landing the jumps. With some luck and some patience, you'll arrive at the door and to the original workshop that influenced Garman's creation. You won't see anything alive here. When you step in, it's pretty obvious why Garman chose this hunk of land to model his safe haven after. There are no beasts, no hunters or beings around to disturb the land completely tranquil and calm. Don't feel the need to rush off after you find this place. There's plenty to explore here. The first thing you'll notice is the building itself, with the doors completely open. Inside you'll find plenty of things. You'll find a small hair ornament that, in the item description, states that it would look absolutely beautiful on grey hair. Presumably this belongs to the doll. You can also find a set of her clothes stored away in a chest where the bath messengers used to be in the dream world. Give this ornament to her back in the dream, and she'll become overwhelmed with joy. What? What is this? I... I... can't remember. Not a thing, only... I feel... a yearning, something I never felt before. What's happening to me? Tell me, Hunter, could this be joy? <sighs> it's hard to tell what this action actually does. No new dialogue options are open for the doll, and she seems to treat you the same. What might this mean? And why is it that certain objects can enter other planes of existence, such as the ornament and your blood echoes, but other, more foul items can't? Ever notice how you can be fighting for a long time and be cleansed of all blood when you enter the dream? <sighs> We're getting off topic, aren't we? You can find a third of the umbilical cord, which gives you insight and a way to unlock the true ending of Bloodborne. But something seems stranger near the back of the building. You'll find the doll, completely lifeless and laying on the ground. 
the exact same doll you can converse with in the dream. Near the left entrance to the workshop, there is a single gravestone high up on the hill just above the chest. Laying in front of it is an item listed as the Old Hunter's Bone. Belonging to one of Garamond's apprentices, most likely the Hunter Lawrence, a smoke cloud overtakes your hunter as a substitute for the dodge and roll maneuvers when equipped. It would make sense for this to be the grave of Garamond's apprentice, considering it's the closest to the workshop. Now let's talk about the doll. She isn't guaranteed to be in the same place every time you return. Sometimes she will leave her original position in the dream and can be found facing the same tombstone, paying her respects to the fallen hunter. Other events might happen when returning to the dream as well. You can also find the doll sleeping. You can find Garamond's talk of Lawrence's whereabouts, and even a depressing dialogue from Garamond begging to be unshackled from the dream. Oh, somebody. But there's still one major difference, the most obvious and the creepiest. The tombstone beside the workshop isn't the only one. Littered all over the dreamscape are strangely marked tombstones that represent a fallen hunter. In the original workshop, you find nothing of the sort. Choosing the submission of your life ending is important behind the explanation. After you wake up above ground, a cutscene shows the doll kneeling by another grave, presumably yours. Just goes to show you. Sometimes it's the little details that work. Unfortunately for us, some loose ends still remain untied. A couple questions still linger. What's the mystery behind Garamond's apprentice, Lawrence, and the reason he had grown so attached to him? Why is the workshop suddenly caught ablaze after the defeat of the wet nurse? Might the condition of the dream have a connection to the Queen Yarnum or her daughter Mergo? So many mysteries. Oh well. There's always next time. You can request more of Bloodborne in the comments section if you'd like some insight on a topic we haven't yet covered. And of course, always remember to please like the video and subscribe if you wish to support us. There's quite a bit left. We're not done by any means.